Hey guys, today I'm gonna talk about possibly the best set for foils. And Ixlon looks like a pretty good set for foils, but the most valuable foils actually are in 7th edition or older, or around the same time. 7th edition was the first core set to have it. I believe the first foil that was publicly released to many people was the Lightning Dragon from Urza Saga, the pre-release. I remember that I looked at it and then I looked at the Pokemon foil at the same time. I was like, hmm, I think Pokemon foils are better than Magic the Gathering foils. Just the way they did it with the sparkly and the, it's not just, you know, there's accents pretty much into the Pokemon foils where it, you put them in sunlight and they just shine a little differently as opposed to magic, which is just a foiling technique as opposed to art. But uh, 7th edition, I did play a ton during this time period. I loved, loved, loved the fact that you could get a foil. And if you did get one, you want to get a second one. It would just replace what you already had. This is the set that some of the cards, like you will see Sleight of Hand, which is a common it's a, it's a pricey common, I think it's like two, three dollars, but a as a foil, it's over two hundred dollars as a foil common in this set. Imagine if Ponder was in this set or a brainstorm or something like that. That would be insane. Actually, you don't need to imagine because Brainstorm was in Macadian Mask. But I would argue that having a card in this set is what people considered pimp for EDH. So we will see another $200 foil soon enough. The cards, I mean, generally don't need to be that good as long as they're in foil in this set. Um, a lot of the Grizzly Bears is a $40 foil in this set. There are some very strange ones where you look at it and you just say, okay, I guess people really want to collect it. I remember playing and I remember the foils were actually... So cheating was happening rampantly during this time period uh, at the Grand Prix, at the Pro Tours, there's a lot of cheaters everywhere. And one of the biggest cheating scams besides the cards in lap, where you just put your cards in your, your lap and then you pick the card that you need whenever you want, was the foils. Remember, we didn't really have as much card sleeves. We didn't really use card sleeves back in the day. So the foil would bend and you could tell if the cheating technique was either all your land or foil or in the reverse, all your non-land or foil. So you can always tell if the next card is going to be a land or a non-land and that's very important when you want to be on curve. This cheating scandal continued, like you can't really... I don't know what happened, but these articles have been disappearing. I think Wizards of the Coast just deletes their own article sometimes. But I remember reading an article, or maybe it was Inquest Magazine, and it was telling you that foils were you know, being used for cheating, and therefore like everyone should not use foils or use penny sleeves. We didn't have sleeves, right? The concept of sleeves had not yet been... I mean, people played and drafted and they didn't put these cards in sleeves. Therefore, the foils were incredibly damaged in time. So this is what I was talking about. Oh, it's $4.50. I own a lot of this card because I own a lot of 7th edition. And it makes sense why it is expensive. It's seeing some modern play. And unless Ponder is unbanned, this card will always see some modern play. But a 200 plus foil is insane. Like, I don't remember if I've ever seen one of these. But, again, the way it would work is a foil common would be way more common. Just given what the nature of the foiling was, that the foil replaced the... So if it was a foil common, it would replace a common. If it was a foil uncommon, it would replace the uncommon. If it was a rare, it would re replace that. You don't get an additional rare just because one of just because yours is foil. Now, on top of all of this, I guarantee you that there are tons of these out there that people don't know is two hundred dollars, and it's just out there in someone's collection. It's two hundred dollars. 
All right, moving on. Lord of Atlantis. I did own this card recently. I sold it to Strike Zone Online. I believe I sold it for a very good price for them, like $25, $30 when it was like $40, $50. It's a beautiful foil and it's really hard. It's hard to tell you why I, you need four copies of this. The person who's going to want this is a very specific buyer. He's going to really care about conditioning and he has a Merfolk legacy deck and he wants four of this, of this type of artwork. Now, if you had four of them, it would be a lot easier to trade them away into something nice. But if you only had one of them, I, I, it sat in my binder forever. It just sat in the binder and sat in the binder and a one day strike zone at the GP Houston, which I will be at. Maybe we'll do a get together again. The last time that supposedly we did a get together, I just met like some, it's, I, I don't call them fans, I guess subscribers. And then we went to Vietnamese food. I sold a lot of magic cards. I said hi to a lot of people. That was fun, but I didn't organize at all, right? I didn't, I didn't organize. This time around, I think I'm gonna do a better job organizing. I'm gonna make like a video in advance to tell you where I'm gonna go. We can grab lunch um, like before, uh, maybe at the same exact place because I assume GP Houston, I haven't looked into it, it's at George R. Brown Center. Is there an anime convention at the same time? I don't know. Last time I went, um, I went with my ex, my, well, at the time she wasn't my ex, and we went to the anime convention and that was it. Like I dropped for, I went to the GP Houston for about, I want to say three to four hours, sold a lot of cards, which then the ex used to buy like stuff. <laughs> so uh, that not happening this year, hopefully. Um, I, I hope there's no anime convention this year because I got like, man, you sell all your magic cards and then you buy like useless like things at over price you know at like artist convention booths like not artist convention i like artist convention booths i like supporting local art but like vendors right so a pikachu plus that normally would buy like you could buy online for ten dollars at a vendor is like 40 and i had vendors like tell me straight up that hey we're gonna overcharge you come in like sunday at like 4 p.m before we close after we close and then you can buy the rest of my inventory which I will show you something really cool. I bought about $1,200 of anime figures recently and they're very beautiful and they're very awesome. But what did I use to buy it? I used my magic money to buy it. So I will tell you, one day I will tell you how much I make from YouTube. Uh, it's a lot less now given the fact that a lot of my, app, a lot of my videos are not appropriate and then they get like into the spam box, I guess. And then they don't collect any money. And I don't really care. Like I don't make a living from Magic the Gathering YouTube videos. So it doesn't really matter to me that they deem it inappropriate. Although I supposedly it hurts your views too, but whatever. Anyway, coat of arms, $500. Give me $500. I do not remember if I saw one of these in foil. I would not be surprised if I did though, because I have a lot of these non-foil. So, hmm, maybe I should look, because at five hundred dollars, assuming I can buy list it at two hundred, I would buy list them all day at two hundred. Like because you, I did not pay any. If I have them, it's because I had them and I couldn't trade them away. And I'm benefiting a lot from that philosophy, where you have a lot of crappy cards. And then suddenly a crappy card becomes like $200 or $500 and you're like, oh shit, this is a very expensive card. Yeah, I might have one of these because now that I'm trying to remember, I made sliver decks back in the day, casual, and I know I ran a foil one of them. So I need to find that deck. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.